to start this conversation by talking about hollowing and bracing. This will be a relatively brief um, conversation because when people are told to do exercise, they're told to, to hollow the abdominals or draw in the abdominals. Now, the idea of this is to activate the muscle transverse abdominis, which connects into the abdominal fascia and the thoracolumbar fascia, which is essentially the same thing because it's one unit um, with essentially the muscles sort of put into it. Um, and that is meant to stabilize the spine. But what I'm hoping you grasp, and I shouldn't have to explain this too much, is that from what I've described before in part one, sort of debunks a little bit the idea of hollowing the abdominals in order to stabilize the spine. Because in order to stabilize the spine, we need tension through our elastic bands all the way around. And if we're just trying to activate one muscle, then we're just activating some of those elastic bands, which is going to create unnecessary tension and unnecessary load on the spine because we're not tensioning all the way around. We're just bringing tension to a little part of that. So when we then go about movement, other parts are going to be um, uh, left vulnerable, if you will. Now, with regards to what bracing does, that's stiffening the torso and it's tensioning those elastic bands, as I've mentioned. And what it's also doing, it's creating these uh, these things, if, if you will, called hoop stresses. So what you've got is when you go to lift something, you create, so when you tension the core and you go to lift, or you go to lift something, you're going to tension, the, the core is going to tension. So for example, if you were to get out of the seat now, so the seat that you're sat in, and you just consciously pulled your navel towards your spine, which is apparently how you activate transverse abdominis, that you think is going to stabilize your spine. But when you, when you go to initiate the movement, your body will unconsciously override that and you will tension your abdominals in a in a brace. Now, when it comes to movement, what we want to be able to do is do that unconsciously, but it's done proactively unconsciously. So what we need to be able to do is proactively do it consciously. So when you go to stand up, your body will naturally brace and it will tension to help with the lift. If you just stick with the hollow, it will compromise the spine, albeit you've been told or you've heard or whatever that it's there to stabilize, but it won't do that because if you put any load through the spine, your, your body will naturally brace. What we then need to be able to do is consciously sort of proactively brace rather than it be a reaction in your body sort of uh, reacting after the fact. It needs to be done before the fact, if you will, to give a true sort of uh, protective um, energy transfer, uh, sorry, protection and energy transfer. So stabilizing of the spine and the ability to transfer the energy through the torso. The other part to this is what it's also doing and what the brace allows to happen. So as loads get heavier, you need to brace more. So when you brace, you do it appropriate to the task. So if it's a, if it's a light load, you lightly brace. If it's a heavy load, you do a heavy brace. With drawing of the navel, that doesn't happen because the body will automatically override the um, the hollowing effect or the drawing in of the um, the abdominals. So it will um, it will brace sort of appropriately anyway. But all I'm saying is just do that proactively. So before you go to lift, brace consciously, then lift. Now. What this is doing is this is creating an intra-abdominal pressure. So there is a pressure being pushed out. What then happens with the brace, that brace is the abdominals which holds that pressure in. And the balance between those two forces of the abdominal brace being pulled in and the, the intra-abdominal pressure being pushed out is known as a hoop stress. So and that's what we need to train our body to do within the brace, to be able to... Um, to, to lift loads appropriately and be able to uh, uh, brace appropriately for those loads. So we've got um, the abdominal 
muscle stiffening. We've got the intra, uh, uh, which is the force sort of compressing. We've got the intra-abdominal pressing out. We, that, the, the balance between those two forces is the abdominal brace. That will offer a protection to the spine because it will hold it in place. But again, it, there can be loads that exceed depending on the, the, the strength and the fitness of the core. So we need to be able to brace appropriately, which is going to appropriately uh, manage intra-abdominal pressures and create hoop stresses, which is going to protect the spine and um, allow those transfers of energy between the upper body and the lower body, or the, the lower body limbs, the legs, and the upper body limbs, the, um, the arms and the shoulders. So what we're now going to do in part three is talk more specifically about movement and how the the bracing works with movement, exercise and sports, which are all kind of the same thing.